we pray. Amen. Welcome. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Are you happy with the house of the Lord? Say, Lord Jesus, today, speak to me, Lord. I open up my heart. I open up my spirit to connect with your word. Today, put in me a Rema word that will sustain me, that will give me life and life in abundance. I receive it today. And so, Lord, I open up my heart, my spirit, my soul, my body to you. Now and forevermore. In Jesus' name. Let's declare a big amen. You can have your seat as you smile. Praise the Lord. Amen. What a mighty God we serve. Mungu mkuu ambaye tunamtumikia. Hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve. Mungu mkuu ambaye tunamtumikia. He's truly glorious. Yeye ni mkuu. He's truly mighty. Yeye ni mkuu. He is gracious. Na ni mwenye neema. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve. Mungu mkuu ambaye tunamtumikia. What a glorious God we serve. Mungu wa mwenyefu ambaye tunatumikia. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Bwana asifiwe. Now um this has been the month of transforming grace. Huu umekuwa mwezi wa neema ambayo inabadilisha. This has been the month of transforming grace. Huu umekuwa mwezi wa neema ambayo inabadilisha. And Pastor Ann took us through a number of series. Na uh, mchungaji Pastor Ann alituelekeza katika mfululizo huu. Praise the Lord. Bwana asifiwe. And I want us to move it on. Praise the Lord. Nipenda tuendeleze siku ya leo. How many are saying, Lord, I receive my transforming grace. Ni wangapi wanasema Bwana ninapokea neema yangu ya kunibadilisha. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, I want just to challenge our mind and our spirits today so that when we understand the concept of grace, we will know the clarity of the word. Ngependa tuchangamshe mawazo yetu ili tunaposikia neno tuwe na uwazi wa neno. And our placement with the word concerning grace. Atujue msimamo wetu wa neno kuhusiana na neema. Lord, Bwana asifiwe. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, I want us to read a few scriptures. Napenda tusome maandiko kadha wa kadha. And as we start, I want us to begin from the book of Romans. Napenda tuanzie katika kitabu cha Warumi. Of Romans. Kitabu cha Warumi. Chapter 4. Lango wa 4. I'll read from verse 1. Verse. Soma kuanzia mstari wa kwanza hadi wa 6. Give me the NKJ version. Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. So I'll read from that as God says this. What then shall we say about Abraham our father as found according to the flesh? For if Abraham was justified by works he has something to boast about but not before God. For what does the scripture say? Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness. Now to him who works the wages are not counted as gifts but as what? As debt. Please read your Bible if you have it there. Amen. Tome Biblia yako iwapo unayo hapo. It says verse 4. Now to him who works to him who does what? Who works? Say it. To him who works the what? The wages are not counted as what? As grace. Please, if you have if you please underline that part in your Bible. And to him who starts. works. The wages are not counted as grace, but as debt. But to him who does not work. Hallelujah. But to him who does not work. But do that's what believes on who on him who Christ who justifies the ungodly his faith is as what is accounted for what for righteousness now let's go to verse 6 just as david also describes the blessedness of the man to whom god does what god 
imputes what? Righteousness apart from works. The Lord. And I want us to open up our eyes because I want to speak something that I want you to have your eyes opened. Ipenda uwe tuwe na macho yetu yafunguliwe. Is the Lord. Bwana asifiwe. We have been told that if it, you are working for it. Unaweza iwapo unaifanyia kazi. Then it is wages. Basi ni mshahara. Or debt. Tokana na jambo ambalo. When you are not working for it, it is deemed as grace. Lakini wakati ambapo hujafanyia kazi ni neema. And it is only for those who do what? For those who believe on him, Christ. Na ni wale tu ambao wanamwamini. Praise the Lord. Those who do what? Who believe on him, Christ. And the Bible says that to them who believe on him, Christ, it is him who justifies. And then the faith of this person will be deemed as what? Righteous. Praise the Lord. Please just walk with me. Let's go to John. John 1. Lord. John 1. We'll come back to Romans at some point. Let's let's together. In the beginning was what? In the beginning was what? And the word was with God. And the word was Let's move on, verse 2. He was in the beginning with God, verse 3. All things were made through him and without him nothing was made that was made, verse 4. In him was what? Life and the life was the light of men. Let's now jump to verse 14. Verse 14. Jump to verse 14. Hallelujah. And, and the Bible says what? And the word, and the word did what? And did what? Dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory. The glory as of the only begotten of the Father. Full of what? Look at this. We beheld what? His glory. So if you want to sense God's glory, you must walk in under the grace. So it says, the word became flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory. The glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Now, jump to verse 17. For the law was given through Moses. But grace and truth came through who? The Lord. Now let's look at, at, at the book of 1 John 4. Verse 6. 1 John 4 verse 6. Hallelujah. 1 John 4. We are of God. He who knows God hears. He who knows God hears. He who is not of God does not hear us. By this, oh, the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And then we are talking into this. But this we know that the spirit of truth. And then verse 7 says, Beloved, let us love one another. For the love is of God. Hallelujah. And everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Verse 8. He who does not love does not know God. For God is what? For God is what? Love. Now let's jump to John 3.16. I'm getting somewhere. I want to bring to us another perspective of grace. I want us to understand. John 3.16. So we have read that for God is what? Now listen to this. For God so loved that he did what? He gave his only begotten son that whoever believes should not. Now do you remember Romans what we read? How do you receive the grace? When you believe on him who justifies what? The ungodly. And by your faith, to you is imputed what? Righteousness. Imputing of righteousness means you are justified. 
Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Please walk with me because I'm getting somewhere. Hallelujah. Now hear me carefully. Now grace, we've, in the Old Testament, we saw people, saw people who, who found grace with God. Hallelujah. We saw people who found grace with God. Genesis 6, 8 tells us of Noah, says that Noah found grace with God. That was the old dispensation. Praise the Lord. 33 verse 10, 8 and 9 and 10 tells us about Jacob. Praise the Lord. If you, jump, if you also jump to 33 verse 9, 8, 9 and 10. Let's look at that. Same Genesis. Now Jacob, he says, now as, let's see, let's see, yeah, there. Then Esau, what, what do you mean by all this company that I met? This, these are to find favor in the sight of my Lord. Let's move on. Now, but Esau said, I have, I have enough, my brother. Keep what you have for, me, for, for yourself. Verse 10. And Jacob said what? No, please, if I have found favor in your sight, then receive my present from my hand. In as much as I have seen your face, as though I had seen the face of God and you are pleased with me. Praise the Lord. Now hear me carefully. In the old dispensation, the old covenant, grace would either find you or locate you. So it was not a privilege. It was for those who are chosen by God. Praise the Lord. Grace was what? For those who are chosen, who are appointed. So if no one found favor with the Lord and he was chosen by God for that purpose, he found the grace. So it would either find you or locate you. Praise the Lord. But in the new dispensation, grace has been released to everyone. Hello? Grace has been released to who? To everyone. All this position, it could find you. It could locate you. New dispensation, grace has been released to everyone. On a condition that you believe in Jesus. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. On a condition that you do what? That you believe in and that you be willing to receive the grace. Please walk with me, but I'm getting somewhere. Now, in the old dispensation, grace could either find you or it could locate you. Praise the Lord. And you had nothing to do with it. Now, in the new dispensation, grace is for everyone. Everyone who believes in Christ Jesus and who have the faith to receive grace. Please walk with me because I'm getting somewhere. Hallelujah. So now it's given to everyone. Everyone. As long as you believe in Jesus Christ and you have the faith to receive the grace. Now, uh, Romans 1 4, we see the Apostle Paul saying this. Romans 1 verse 4. Praise the Lord. Are we there? Yes. Give me from verse 1. Verse 1. And he says this, Paul, the bond servant of Christ Jesus, hallelujah, called to be an apostle, separated to the gospel of God, who which he promised through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures, concerning his son Jesus Christ, who was born of the seed of David, according to the flesh, and declared to be the son of God with the power, according to the spirit of holiness, by the resurrection of the Lord. Now, look at verse 5. Through him, mm -hmm, through him, what happened? Through him, we have done what? So grace is you receive it. Some of us are waiting for grace. 
as when you're a child of God and you believe in Christ Jesus, you need to have the faith to receive the grace. So grace and faith work, they work together. Praise the Lord. You must have the faith to receive the grace. Now hear me carefully now today. So grace is God's love. Grace is God's love expressed through the gift of his son, Jesus Christ. Grace is God's love expressed through the gift of his son, Jesus Christ to those who believe in him that transforms your insufficiency to his absolute sufficiency. Let's, let, let's, let's move slowly. Praise the Lord. So grace is God's love expressed through the gift of his son Jesus Christ to those who believe in him that transforms your insufficiencies to his absolute sufficiency. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And why I brought this concept is because we need to understand that grace came with Christ Jesus. The Bible says, and the word became flesh, the, and the word dwelt among us, praise the Lord, and became flesh. Full of what? Full of grace and truth. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Moses gave us the law. He me brought what? Grace and truth. So when you're looking at grace, because God himself is the author of love. So grace is the love of God, which he expresses through the gift of his son, Jesus Christ. And the question is, to those who believe in him, then, then this grace, now it will then, then it transforms your insufficiencies to his absolute sufficiency. Please, 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 let, let's pause there. Hallelujah. Because I want you to get it. So you can't understand grace unless you, the love of God is in you. Because God out of, for the release of grace, it was out of the love of God. The Bible says that he loved the world so much that he gave us his one and only son, Jesus Christ. That whosoever believed in him, whosoever believed in him, that was the only condition. So, so it is, this grace is God's love expressed through the gift of his son Jesus Christ to those who believe him. That transforms what? Your insufficiency to his absolute sufficiency. Hallelujah. Now, what are our insufficiencies? Number one, human effort. How many have ever tried to make something work? Hey, let's be truthful. How many have ever tried to make something work? There is no grace there. Hallelujah. You know, you try to, if you work, if you make it work, then what you deserve is wages or, 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 or it becomes a debt. But if it is grace, you know one works for it. You receive it in Christ Jesus when you believed him. Praise the Lord. Have you ever tried doing something? And then unajaribu inakata kabisa. Na unaomba tu mungu, lakini wewe unajaribu. Okay, now let me tell you something. Praise the Lord. We are in Kenya. To go. Inchi ya kitu kido. Now, how many of you, are, you have gone to somewhere, government uh, offices, and you want something done? 
and you decide this thing has taken too long, then what do you do? You do that. Hey. I know now we will not, we will not, I know they are not here. They are outside. They are not here, eh? And then, you come to the man of God and say, Pastor, you know, I have been praying. Man of God, prophet, I have been praying. God has done it. Now, will you talk to That is not grace. That was your work. That was your works. And God can only come in a circumstance where he has begun it. So, with grace, God begins things. With grace, it finishes things. With your works, you begin things. With your works, you must sustain and try to finish it. And then you're asking God, God, where are you, Lord? Lord, I've prayed for too long. It's the Lord. Are you getting the concept? So, your insufficiencies one of that is human effort. You are trying to make it work. And then you're asking for God's grace. Hallelujah. The other insufficiency is sin. You are trying to fight sin. Yeah, I'll, I'll give you some, some tips. Praise the Lord. Because sometimes we struggle with sin not because we... We do, when you have the understanding of the scripture, you will understand the grace of God that is upon you even to overcome sin. It's the Lord. That is upon you to do what? To overcome sin. So that becomes our insufficiency. So we are trying to work out, Lord, this week, this week, I'm going to be a good, a good man. I will not watch pornography. I will not go and watch funny, funny things. I will not do the evil, evil all over. You are trying to work it out. Grace is saying, I've given you my son Jesus Christ. Out of my love, says the Father. And because you have believed in him, I have imputed to you, yes, I have justified you. So you don't need to do any other work. You need us to walk under the grace. Okay. And sin cannot follow you. It's the Lord. Yeah. So our insufficiency is, is we have human effort, we have sin. Then we have rules. Do we have rules? We have rules, eh? Do we give rules? Parents, we give rules to our children. Those are our own works. So if you want things to work with your rules, it will not work. You need to understand the grace of God that helps your children to live righteous lives. Because the grace imputed righteousness to them, justified them. So though they are not what you want them to be now, grace tells you they are already what God wants them to be. What you're doing is to teach them how to walk under the grace. Praise the Lord. Our other insufficiency is religious or religion, religious regulations. This is how we do things. Have you ever been going to somewhere and you're like, this is how we do it. Those are our insufficiencies. That's how we do it. It can't be done in any other manner. Praise the Lord. Now, when you're talking about grace, God is showing you his love and telling you, I have already given you what it takes to overcome your human effort. To overcome sin. To overcome those rules. 
to overcome religion through my son Jesus Christ whom you believed and so I am reading to you absolute absolute sufficiency is God's the first one we have is God's indescribable love so when you have grace you experience God's indescribable love hallelujah so this absolute sufficiency number one is it is shown through God's indescribable love the second thing it is shown through God's joy praise the lord hallelujah so so now god is moving you from insufficiency human effort sin rules religion and religion and religious practices now he's taking you to his absolute sufficiency where is reason to you is indescribable love two is reason to you is exceeding joy number 3 is reason to you is total freedom or liberty hallelujah so grace when it, you receive it you walk in in this incredible love of god because that's the absolute sufficiency you walk in exceeding joy hallelujah then you walk in total freedom because that freedom liberty comes through Christ so when you walk under the grace the indescribable love of god is in you the exceeding joy of god is in you the total freedom of god is in you number 4 the absolute sufficiency of god is that it releases to you hallelujah union that you express intimacy with him hallelujah it is you union that you express intimacy with him hallelujah hallelujah then the fifth one that he releases you as absolute sufficiency under the grace he releases you is undisputable power God. So when we talk about God's transforming grace, when the love of God is poured upon you because of the gift of his son to you, to you who believed him. So what is he doing? He saying, I am taking away your insufficiency, your human effort, your sin. That's why I died for you at the cross. I took away your human effort. I took away your sin. He saying, I took it away. Hallelujah. I took away the rules. You have tried to work your life with rules, it has not worked. He said, I took it away. I took away your religion. I have tried even to 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 fight Agilia. John is as well I don't sin. But I don't know Agilia, you're still sinning. Now Jesus is saying, I have taken it away. Your human effort, your sin. Hallelujah. Your rules. Your religion. and i'm releasing to you my absolute sufficiency my indescribable love hallelujah i'm releasing to you my exceeding joy i'm releasing to you total freedom so as a child of god under the grace you are walking in liberty there is no tormentation of the devil you are not under demon demonic oppression you are walking in total freedom under the grace He says I'm bring you to into a place of intimacy under the grace where you are you are you have a close union with God that he says under the grace I release to you my unspeakable power so why why he says the greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world hallelujah why because This grace that was released has given you what 
undiscoverable power. Power to rebuke demons. Power to overcome every works of dust of that. Power to overcome principalities. Power to overcome every powers and spiritual host of the in the heavenly in the wicked in, uh, we, uh, wicked spiritual host in the, in the heavenly places. And every rulers of the, of the world, you are given the power to overcome under the grace. Hello? Hello? That's why if you are trying to make it work, you are wasting time. He's saying, my grace is given to you so that I can turn your insufficiency and make it my absolute sufficiency. If, if, look, at, if look at the Bible, there's a verse it's a verse that we have. First Corinthians. Uh, no, Second Corinthians 9. Second Corinthians 9. Verse 8. Second Corinthians 9, verse 8. Let me read it for you. Second Corinthians 9, verse 8. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Woo! Woo Please read it out. He says what? And God is what? To do what? To who? So that you can do what? So that you may do what? You may have abundance. Are you seeing that the answer to your problems are in the script? But what are we trying to do? We are trying to make it work. And I'm trying to help my brother. Let me tell you, young people. Now you have, now you, now you, you have, you have a young, you can come to us, you know? I was about, this is brother, I'm trying to help him. And our coca, I'm trying to help him so that he can go be born again. And then you are connecting with him. You are trying to make it work, human effort. Human what? Because you are trying to, to change him. Well, God is saying, I am able to make grace abound towards you. That always having what? Sufficiency. This is the absolute sufficiency of God. So that you realize you can't save him even you by grace you are saved. And so even him by grace he is saved. You can only guide him to Christ. I'm, I'm putting effort. I'm working it out. At our God. I'm working it out. You keep working it out. God is saying, if you want to walk under this grace, your insufficiency must be done sufficient. So that you can be able to enjoy abundance in every good work that you're doing. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm a neighbor neighbor. We are just, we are just moving on. Bado, bado. I'm a neighbor neighbor. Not yet. Hallelujah. In in Inaingia. We are neighbor. Inaingia. In a donjo. In a donjo. Hallelujah. And now that is why, as Christians, we come to a place where we feel hopeless. And they're saying, God, where are you? No, there's something my wife and I have been doing, and I was telling my wife that that, that that thing has taken time to happen. So I'm telling her, we are not going to do any human effort. If God is God, He's a God of sufficiency. So His absolute sufficiency shall be upon us. So if you are, you are saying you are trying to make it to, to do it, it's not working. Leave it to God. Some of us are fighting until you do wrong things so that you are trying to help God. As the Bible says, at God who helps those who help themselves. Who, where is he? He's not there. Let me tell you, grace is saying, I am turning your insufficiency to absolute sufficiency. So, you, have, you will not work for it. If you believe in me, I release it. 
because I am the giver of all sufficiency in all things. Look at this. Let's underline this in your Bible. In all things. Sufficiency in what? In all things. But then, when this comes, then you know what happens? You will have what? Abundance. In every good work, not evil work. So you can't do evil and expect grace. Hello? You can't do evil and do what? And expect God's grace upon you. No. It says, in every good work. Praise the Lord. Oh my, hallelujah. Be neighbor, neighbor. We are just beginning. I want you to reflect. I, I, are, you, are you feeling that now you need to do a turnaround? Do you feel like you need to do a turnaround? Because God's grace will not work with your effort. I have tried to make it work. Unawazewa na semanga ti. Nitakuja huyu bibi abadilike. Na kwambia utajaribu. Wewe ndio utakunjwa. Ati or you hear a woman say, I will I will help this man to change. Let me tell you. Walk under the grace. Because it is under the grace that there is the indisputable power of God that turns circumstances. That makes abundance in every good work. That gives you total freedom. That brings you to a place of intimacy with God. And I will teach you today how to the spread of grace. I'll tell you, remember, before I finish, remind me, I'll teach you something about the success of grace. How to, to the secret of getting into the grace, not you sustain the grace. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, can I show you something in the Bible? I don't know whether we have time, but you might, I don't know that. Let's read a few. Let's look at First Kings. First Kings uh, chapter 29. First Kings chapter, chapter 11. Let's, let's go to chapter 11 first. First Kings chapter 11. First Kings chapter 11. I'm, I'm, I might not read everything. I will, I'll help you just to understand something. Let's go to verse 29. Start from 25 so that you can get some content. So I will read this. Then I'll just give you to go and read. Praise the Lord. Now look at this. He was... Go back to around 24. Okay, here it is. So he gathered men to him and became captain over the band of the raiders when David killed those of Zobah. And they went to Damascus and dwelt there and reigned in Damascus. Let's move on. He was an adversary of Israel all the days of Solomon, besides the trouble that had had caused. And he abode Israel and reigned over Syria. Verse 26. Then Solomon's servant, look at this. Solomon's servant. <laughs> ah, yeah, 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 yeah. It says, and this is what caused him to rebel against the king. Look at this. This man, now I, I, I have to understand things that will make you, that will just cause God's grace to come upon you. So remember, Solomon was the anointed king of God. Remember? Remember, he was the anointed king of God. God chose him. Is that true? But this man rebelled against him. His position was what? He was a servant. I'm a neighbor servant. Mutu wa mkono. Hallelujah. Alikuwa nini? Mutu wa mkono. But why did he rebel against Solomon? Listen carefully. Verse 27. Solomon had built the Milo and repaired the damages to the city of David, his father. Verse 28. Then Jeroboam Moam, Boam, was a mighty man of valor, and Solomon, seeing that the young man was industrious, made him the officer over the, over the labor force of the house of Joseph. Verse 29. Now it happened that the time when Jeroboam went out of Jerusalem, the prophet Ahijah, the Shilite, met him on the way, and he clothed himself the what, with a new garment, and the two were alone in the field. Look at verse 30. And Ahijah took hold of the new garment, 
that was on him and tore it into 12 pieces. Then he said to Jeroboam, take for yourself how many pieces? 10. For thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, behold, I will tear down the kingdom out of the hand of Solomon. Are you hearing this? A servant. A servant. Let me tell you something. When grace locates you, when you know how to walk under the grace, it does not matter your position. God will lift you from that thing to something. A servant. He was nowhere. Nowhere. I will say this. Behold, I will tear the kingdom out of the hand of Solomon. And I will give ten tribes. Look at this. Who, who was doing it? The hand of God was upon him. The grace of God was upon him. That favor of God was upon him. God was snatching what belongs to a king and giving it to a servant. When you walk under the grace, you don't need to be known by any man. Hello? You don't need to be known in any office. When the grace of God locates you, when you find his grace, when you walk under the grace of God in Christ Jesus, you don't need any, any Godfather. You don't even need to be known by the pastor. God himself will become your sufficient, absolute sufficient in all things. And he will cause your hands to experience abundance in every good work you do. You do your job, you get favor. You wash your dances, you get favor. You wash the house, you have favor. You wash church, you have favor. Because you have learned, because when you have learned how to walk under the grace. Now hear me carefully. For God to fulfill this word. So Solomon, after here, um, let me just practice, so I don't have time to do anything. After here, Solomon had what the prophet said. But then, you know some of us, do you know that some of us here, Praise the Lord. Some of us here, we, when we hear something good prophesied to someone, we like killing it. Luko. When people hear something good spoken about someone, you want to do what? You want to kill it. Even Solomon wanted to kill what God had declared upon Jeroboam. He tried to kill it. So it forced Jeroboam to go run to Egypt to King Ashik and stay there for some time. Let me tell you something today, and I want to tell you something today. When you walk under the grace of God, God will give you wisdom to know how to walk safe, to know how, wisdom for, for your protection, so that even the powers that may be cannot destroy you. Hello? If Jeroboam stayed with Solomon, he would be killed. Hello? Now, the grace of God, that when you walk out of this grace, it gives you the wisdom to know how to escape every fiery darts of the enemy. If Jeroboam stayed there, I said, God's grace is upon me. He has said, I will take from, from Solomon. Ten kingdoms, ten tribes. Solomon and Gemaliza. So the grace of God gives you wisdom to know how to escape every fear that's of the enemy. And the wisdom here was this. Move away to Egypt. Until the time that Solomon died. Praise the Lord. I'm a neighbor, neighbor. So you walk under the grace. God's grace will give you wisdom to escape the plans of darkness. Hallelujah. Now, I'll be your wisdom. Musikai, if Jeroboam stayed with Solomon, he would have died. Because, remember, God spoke. Is that true? But if he stayed with Solomon, who would have died? He would have died. 
Because Solomon's plan was to kill him. Hebu wewe msikia. Yaani mtu anakuambia ati huyu 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 mfanyikazi wako ndio anaenda kuchukua kingdom kumi na wewe unabaki na moja. Na ila hii moja that, that, that the Lord gave him. <laughs> no, this one kingdom it was not because of Solomon. It was because of he said because of my covenant that I had with you with David. So God left him Judah. And that was not because of Solomon, but it was because of the covenant God made with the father his father David. And that was the only basis why God remained let it. So all the years and and, and, and the days of King Solomon is still ruled the 11. But then when he died, his son Rehoboam took over. Praise the Lord. So remember Jeroboam was a servant Rehoboam was the son of who? Of, of King Solomon. So the son took over. And God allowed Rehoboam to 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 ignore the advice of the old men and he took the advice of the young men and the Bible says so that the scriptures could when you walk under the grace whatever promise God has given you it will surely come to pass it does not matter how long it takes it will surely come to pass the devil might try to kill you the enemy may try to to clear you like king solomon God's wisdom will be released for you to rush to Egypt. But with every promise that God said concerning your life as long as you walk under the grace. Hello? It will surely come to pass. It does not matter how long it takes. Hello? It does not matter how long it takes. Do you know the period from the time the Lord spoke up to to um Jeroboam to the time King Solomon died. Do you know those are how many years? Some of us I'm talking to someone here that you 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 gave up on God. Lord you said I will give me 10 kingdoms. Lord look at this 20 years Lord. Look at Lord 20 years. If God said it stick to the grace. Don't get off the grace. Hallelujah. Some of us we lose our blessing because So God said it. We are no longer in the path of grace. We left the path of grace. And no wonder we can't get what was declared. The Bible says let every man be called a liar. But God is truth. Is a God of truth. If he said it, walk under the grace. Though he may tarry it will surely come to pass 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 hello because when god says it though solomon may be alive a time is coming he must die he had to die so that god's promise could be and god allowed his son to make wrong decisions So when you walk under the grace don't worry some people will make some wrong decisions so, so that you can rise <laughs> hello when you walk under the grace some people will make some wrong decisions so that you 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 can rise Rehoboam had to make some mistakes ignore the advice of the old men and take the advice of the young men so that what God promised Jeroboam will be done. And you know what? The people appointed Jeroboam as king of of the 10 tribes. And then do you know what? Let me say something. Hear me carefully. Rehoboam tried to go back to fight. And the word of the Lord came. And the Lord told him it is by Let me tell you when you walk under the grace what God has said for you no one can take it away from you no demon no born again person nothing can take away it, it away from you God will go and tell them hey Roboam this is my plan back off praise the lord and when that happened the bible says what Rehoboam retreated and and you cannot go and fight against your brothers. 
It is my plan. So hear me, people of God. Under this grace, transforming grace, some of you will be transformed some, from servants to kings. Hello? You'll be transformed from servants to kings. So don't worry about your state now. Don't worry about where you are now. God will transform you from a mere servant of the king to a king. Now, hear me careful today. Well, the moment God raises you under the grace, hear me carefully, even your sustenance when success has come must be under the grace. Hear me carefully. Your sustenance in, in your period of success where God has done what he said he would do, it must still be under the grace. Praise the Lord. Hello, hear me carefully. Even when God has done all that that he did, he did for Jeroboam, at some point, Jeroboam forgot that it was the grace of God upon him. And if you look in the Bible, 2 Kings 12, 2 Kings 12, 2 Kings 12, verse 26 and 28, 2 Kings 12, verse 26 and 28. Praise the Lord. 2 Kings 12. No, 1 Kings. 1 Kings. 1 Kings 12. Praise the Lord. 1 Kings 12. And let's read it together. 1 Kings 12. Verse 26. Ah, look at this. Now, look at this. Remember, what brought you to the power was grace. Your sustenance in your success must remain under the grace. And Jeroboam said in his heart, Now the kingdom may return to the house of David. Verse 7. If these people go up to offer sacrifice in the house of the Lord at Jerusalem, then the heart of the people will turn back to their, to their Lord. Jeroboam, king of Judah, and they will kill me and go back to who? To the Jeroboam king of? Now look at this. Are you seeing people of God? If grace took you from the my, my repeat and secured you away from King Solomon and raised you to a king, that same grace that picked you from the mighty clay must be the same grace that should sustain you in your success. Remember, grace is God's love. Express the gift of Christ Jesus to those who believe him. That transforms your insufficiency. It was not human effort that raised Jeroboam to a king. It was God's absolute sufficiency. His grace. That moved him from a mighty pit of a servant to a king. Now even as a king, you must remain under the to, to experience abundance in every good work all through time, all through your reign. Now this man, he forgot that it was grace that picked him from a servant. And so what did he do? Now look at this. He, now he's saying that if the people go and offer, who, who raised him? It was God. Remember, God is all-knowing. He performs all things. He sees all things. Verse 28. Look at what, what now he did. Verse 28. Look at this. Therefore, the king asked advice of and made two calves of gold and said to the people, It is too much for you to go to Jerusalem. Here are your gods, O Israel, which brought out from the land of in that. So while he was in Egypt, what was he learning? Are you seeing that? Be cautious, even as you are waiting on God, of the things that you learn. Hello? If you are Egypt, remain. But don't walk away with the traditions of the Egyptians. He picked this from the Egyptians. He picked this from the Egyptians. And then he forgot that it was the grace of God that picked him from a servant to a king. 
And so here, instead of remaining under the grace, he went to other gods. And this was the part of the loss. If grace picked you from a mighty pit, and grace raised you up, then the same grace will sustain you to the final end. One of the greatest enemies of grace. One of the greatest enemies to, to, to grace is pride. Hallelujah. Pride leads you out of grace. Because it looks human effort. I am the one who has been king. Don't you see I was a servant and now I am king. Who are you? Who do you think you are? I am unbogable. I am unchangeable. Pride is the greatest deterrent to pray. It leads you out of grace and takes you to your insufficiency. While God is saying, when all grace abounds, I have given you, I, and I am always giving you sufficiency in all things. Hello? So that whatever you do with your works, in your hands, every good work experiences abundance. People of God, you know, let me tell you. Let me I told you, I'll teach you the word. It's the grace of God. Praise the Lord. Let's look at James 4 6. James 4 6. Hallelujah. Oh my. my. Hallelujah. He gives what? Let's read. He does what? He gives more grace. Who gives more grace? Therefore, he says, God does what? If God lifted you in grace, remain under the grace, humble. But I've told you, the greatest deterrent to grace is pride. Now, hear me carefully. The greatest propeller to faith is to, 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 to grace is faith. propels to, to sustain that level of praise the Lord now when we see God's power no, let, let, let me give you today. for example today if I gave you uh, give me something oh the phone now, so assume that this phone is, yes, come, because you came. Now, assume that this phone is mine. Okay? It's mine. Okay? This is bad. Okay. So I decide, I will get a phone for his bad. He can choose to receive it as he has. Is that true? From there, whatever he does with the phone, it's not under my control, it's under him. That's true. Now God is saying, I've given you grace. You didn't, you don't deserve it. Hello? You have not worked for it. Now, once that grace is given, what you do with it? On you. If you use this gift by faith, your grace gives you to abound. To link. If you use this to plan evil, remember the abundance is not on evil work, it's on good work. Are you getting that? Now, second scenario. This is badly. I decide to give him a gift. 
Ten diri. Did God provide? Did God release grace? So how, what makes him not? Remember, I said it. Grace is God's love expressed through the gift of his son Jesus Christ to those who believe. Hello? So what would cause him to reject this? So I have given him, he still feels it is not, it is not a gift. Lack of faith, disbelief. Though God has given it, he still feels that he didn't deserve to get it. And so you reject what God has given freely. And so what will I do? The moment God releases a gift and you refuse, that bad the party is going to be in the world. I am the owner of that phone. I have given you grace on my guitar. Because how do you refuse the grace? Lack of faith. See? Or pride. And you know why? And Angalia, maybe me, me, na yetu kutume kosana. Sawa. How can I, how can I you hit this one? And you make a hit. You make a kamote. So what will you do? You will reject that which is given. And that's how we deal with God. We reject what God has given you. And so me, because I'm the one who bought it. And my intention was good. You who did not deserve praying, I will, the Lord will choose, choose you and appoint you and tell you. Then he'll be going, hey, Jehovah has done it. I've been praying for a phone. Jehovah has done it. Why? Faith, 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 faith was being propelled. So that which belonged to him has now been released to him because faith was activated and he was ready to receive. That's how we deal with God. Some of us, God has released the grace. Right. So you reject the, 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 the gift. Or lack of faith or disbelief. So again you reject the grace. He will not go back with it. Even you, who can know a gift, you might even go and give to a guard. Wait. 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 Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Look at this. You must be willing to receive grace. Let you need to have the attitude to receive grace. Hallelujah. Have the attitude to receive grace. No wonder what was yours lives, lives, then goes to a recipient who had the attitude to receive from God. You understand in grace? You don't receive because one pride, two, and believe. And you lack the faith to receive it. Because you must receive grace. Some of you, God forgave you your sins. Let me show you something. Guys, don't, don't go away. Let me show you something. Some of us, God, God forgave you your sins. Let me show you Ephesians 1 7. Please get me because I want to wrap. I know time, time is not on my side. Oh, but I promised you some grace. Uh, you'll allow me some few minutes. I, I close on that part of the secrets. Okay. Hmm. Please read this one. In Him, redemption through the forgiveness. Now, we are careful, carefully. So, what? According to the riches of his grace, what have you received? 
redemption through so you who are unclean the moment you come to Christ Jesus so you are a sinner no he says that second Corinthians 5 17 or 22 he says that you are now a new a new man remember now look at look, look at this grace is telling you this I have redeemed you with my blood Saying, I have redeemed you by my, by my blood. Don't feel condemned. He whom the Son sets free is free indeed and freely liberated from the curse of the law. So the Bible says, I'm looking for that, that verse. I can, I can see it in my head. It should be either 1 6 Roman somewhere. It says that you are no longer under the law, but now you are under what? Grace. Is it 4 6, 4 16 somewhere there? Romans 4 16 somewhere. Just, just look for it. It says, You are no longer under what? Under the law. But you are now under what? Grace. So hear me carefully. You could be living a filthy life. But the moment you come to Christ Jesus, He says, I have redeemed you by my blood. Romans 6 14. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I have redeemed you by my blood. I paid the price. Why are you walking guilty? Why are you feeling like why, why you're going through tra troubles is because your parents did this. Let me tell you, when the blood of Jesus redeems you and uh, according to the riches of his grace, let me tell you, it does not matter what your parents did. You have the power of the blood of Jesus Christ to cancel every debt of the past. this. For sin shall not have dominion over you. Hear me carefully. Sin shall not have dominion over what? Over you. Are you here? You are starting with sin. Let me tell you. Those are the human insufficiencies. You must learn how to walk under the grace. The grace is saying what? I have redeemed you by my precious blood. So, sin no longer has dominion over you. You are not under the law. But under grace, absolute sufficiency, indescribable love. Hello? Exceeding joy. Hello? You are no longer under, 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 under sin dominion. You are experiencing this in, in undisputable power. You are having intimacy with him. Hello? You are walking in full freedom! What happened to your parents? They died of a disease. Now I think, I was, who told you you're going to die? You're not dying. You're saying, you have been redeemed by the blood according to the riches of grace. Grace has been released for you. But under the blood of Jesus Christ, you are redeemed by the blood. Total freedom! Hello? Total freedom! So who are you to say? I am um, this disease, my parents. But well, let me tell you, when you are redeemed by the blood, sin no longer has dominion over you. The curse of the Lord no longer has dominion over you. You can stand under the grace and you declare in the name of Jesus Christ, I am redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. And because of the redemption, I am no longer a slave. I am not a slave to sin. Not a slave to diseases. Not a, a slave to the, the, to the things my parents did. I break the cycle. I break the yoke. I break the trends. And from me now, the blood of the lamb. I am not a slave to the past. I am a slave to righteousness. It was imputed. It was imputed. I am justified under the grace. So we are being told. Let's go back to, to Ephesians 1 7. So, by the redemption of the blood, you are no longer under what? The law. So, when you walk under the grace, I could not say much to you as the one who we are looking Let me tell you, you will live many, many years to exalt you. You will live many years to exalt God. 
Why? Because you are now having all sufficiency in all things. You are now walking in abundance of every good work. See, that's, why, that's why you need to understand the word of God. I, I, are you seeing why you need to understand the word of God? Because when you know the word of God, some things will not come. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. Me, 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 when I sleep, I sleep. <laughs> yes. What's the matter with you? I am under royalty. The king of kings is my lord. That's a way better. You can't sleep. You are disturbed. You are always worried. So, that means I was talking. I was talking. There's one who came here sometimes back. No, Abba, 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 what to put down on a pocket of Baraka now and I enter? Now, Ru, 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 what am I going to say? That's a juicy, a big one, Simu. And I'm being told. That professor who came, they couldn't sleep. So when I was told, I was told that the problem they were having was that they could, they could not sleep. Me, 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 I have grace of sleep. Eh? Me, I wake up at night only to pray or to receive revelation. Right. Otherwise, yes. There's grace. Anakuja apa, kumbia ya kawa kapa wakapokea. I'm being told, excuse me, Lala. This is Ayana Alisau. For me, I was being given this story through the one who sent them. But I say, "Kujapa kupatira mungu shini kurani." The Lord. Let me tell you, when you understand grace, it does not matter where you come from. It does not matter. It does not matter matter your family or who are your parents. You are redeemed by the blood. You are redeemed by the blood. The curse of sin was broken at the cross. The curse of pain and disease was broken at the cross. The curse of curses of your family were broken at the cross. Hereditary trends were broken. Out of this grace, it says, according to the riches of his grace. Who? Oh, he says, you are forgiven of what? Of your sins. Some of us, we are living in, in our past sins. Oh God, you know, I, 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 I sinned again excuse few some years. Lord, could I be suffering now? Because let me tell you, people of God, this grace has been, it was released to you. It has removed your insufficiency. Stop thinking about your past sins. Now, when anything happens, you are thinking, oh, oh is this because of my past sins? Where are we? Hear the word of God. The grace that has been released. Forgive all So when you come in God's presence, do not focus on the sin. Focus on Christ. Hallelujah. Focus on who? On Christ. Oh, I'm speaking to someone here. Don't live under the torment of the past. Because under the grace, your insufficiency was made absolute sufficiency. And I said what? Part of absolute sufficiency is what? Total freedom. You are free. You are free. Don't allow the devil to speak to your life. Hear me? And I'll say something here. So you are forgiven. And because of grace, you are imputed righteousness. Is that, is that true? But now the question is, shall you continue to live in sin? Let's go to Galatians 5.13. Galatians 5.13. I'm not wrong here. Galatians 5.13. Look at this. Let's do this. For you, brethren, having been called to... Wait, wait, wait. What gave you liberty? Grace. Hello? What gave you liberty? Grace. Only do not use that grace, liberty, as a what? As an opportunity for what? For the flesh.
flesh. But through, oh, what does that tell you? To sustain grace, your love for God. Ooh. Your love for God. Because God, grace is God's love expressed through His Son to those who believe Him. So that it transforms your insufficiency and makes it absolute sufficiency. So how do you remain in that grace? Love is God. I will not sin. Not because of anything, but because I love God. How many have ever been in love here? I. How many have been in love? How many have ever been in love? Let me see. What happens when you are in love? You always want to do the right things for them. Is that true? You always want to, be, to do the right thing for? Now, grace is saying this. To walk in this grace continuously. Love God. Remain in his love. And at our Kadmali Kuna Chuki, where Chuki Patikanangi? Where Ukuna Rongani? Your raw raw move. Oh, he lay soft. Hallelujah. Ron Romzuri. Hey, you're your best. I baby what to? You're in your ill raw, you see, Titi. You're in your Praise the Lord. That's how you sustain grace. Now, please sit down because I know you are, you are, you are, you are taking notes. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Clap for them. So, the secret number one to sustain grace is loving. Loving. Because out of love, it really So for you to sustain in grace. For you to do what? Sustain grace. Love. Love. Love him. If Jeroboam had remembered that the one who raised him from a servant to a king of Israel was God, he would not think of his human effort. To sustain his kingdom. And that's the problem Christians are doing. You want, and by the can I give you a secret today? Wakati umefanya dhambi, and you know that you're away from God. So you want to work efforts to do what? To sustain yourself. God is saying, when there is sin, grace is saying, confess, repent. Hello? What is grace saying? Confess, repent. When you hide it, pride comes. You lose the grace. Then you lose the blessing. Are you seeing that? Now, number two way of remaining in the, the secret to remaining in grace is live and walk in the spirit. Live and walk in the spirit. I'll give you, because I don't have time, let me give you some verses. Can you go and read later? Galatians 5.5. 5. Galatians 5.5. 5. Also, you can read Galatians 5.26. Look at this. For through what? Faith. Through the Spirit, eagerly waits for the what? The hope of righteousness by faith. Also, you can also read Colossians 3.5.10. So if you are to, there's a verse I'm looking for in I think, Romans, where it says, no, 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 not in Romans, Galatians, give me 16, Galatians 16. Let me get it for you, for of God. I want to show you something. And, and maybe, I know I, know, I know I don't have time, praise the Lord, allow me to wrap this. Yes, and let me, Galatians. Galatians 5. I want to show you something. 
Now look at this. Look at this. Verse 16. Okay. Walk in the spirit. And you shall not do what? I see that. So if you walk in the spirit, the flesh will not come. Look at verse 24. I, want to, I wish this way we were, we should be having spirit. So, let, so in your Bible, mark that one. Now let's go to verse 24. Verse 24 says this. And those who are Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desire. So how would you achieve that? Walking in the spirit. Remember, verse 14 says this. Verse 16 says this. Walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. And verse 24 says what? And those who are in Christ have done what? Crucify the flesh and its passion. So how do you crucify the flesh and the passion? Remember, you are redeemed by the blood. So to sustain grace, you must walk and live. Yes. Hallelujah. You must walk and live in the spirit. But three. To walk in grace, you must continue in Christ. Who is the author of grace? Who is the author of grace? Christ. So if you are to continue in grace, you must continue in Christ. Verse 6. And also John 15, 1 to 8. Praise the Lord. John 15, 1 to 8. Colossians 2, 6 to 7, and Hebrews 3, 14. Hebrews 3, 14. Look at this, verse 14 of, of Hebrews 3. For we have, we have become partakers of Christ. If we hold the beginning of our confidence, steadfast then, look at this, up to the end. Christ up to where? I mean, never, never, Christ to the, up to the end. I mean, never, never, Christ up to the end. If you die, you die in Christ. If you live, you wait for his second coming in Christ. The Lord. Now, the other way, the secret of remaining in grace is continuing in faith. And I'm finishing here. I think I will. I still have one more Sunday. Praise the Lord. I thank God that Pastor Anne set for us a very good pace. Amen. But we need to pass to Malaysia too. Is Lord. So if you began with grace, grace up to the end. Either when you die in grace, in Christ, or comes and picks you in rapture, or the second advent. Remember, I talked about rapture. Um, okay. If you miss that one, suddenly go to it was, it was a CBD fellowship. Praise the Lord. Oh my. So you must continue in what? In faith. Colossians 1.23 Colossians 1.23 If indeed, look at this. If indeed you continue in the faith, grounded and steadfast, and are not moved away from the hope of the gospel you had, which was preached to every creature, and the heaven of which I, Paul, came away. Finally, Fight the secret to continuing in grace. Now, this is the hardest. I mean, I am saying, 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 I am do you know Malenge? Malenge the final one as I finish. Now, now I'm finished. Now, now we are finishing. Secret of grace. Number four. Be number five. That's number five. Be patient. 
Hilo la kwangu. You have waited on God. You are praying. Be patient. Can I tell you something? Even if Jeroboam wanted to do what? If he came back to Egypt while Solomon was alive, he would be. Is that true or not? Would he have become king? Would he have become king? To walk in this grace, you must be patient in hope. Let me give a few verses. Romans 8:24. Hebrews 3:6. Hebrews 3:6. Also 12 to 14. And also Hebrews. 15. Let's read 3, 6. Okay, let's 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 read the verse. For we are saved in this hope. But hope that is sin. So why does one see hope for what? Are you seeing that? Now let's go to Hebrews 15, 3, 6. But Christ is a son over his own house. Whose house we are if we hold fast the confidence and the rejoicing of hope from the end. The neighbor. You hold hope firm today? Hebrews 3.6 Hebrews 3.6 We all fast there. The confidence and the rejoicing of what? Hope. Up to where? To the end. Verse 12 tells us this. Verse 12. Tells us this. Beware, brethren, lest there be any of you of an evil heart, of unbelief. Are you seeing that? In departing from the living God. But exhort one another daily, when it is called today, lest any of you harden through this display of, of, of sin. For we are, we are partakers of Christ. If we hold fast, look at this, the confidence set fast to the end. God. Hallelujah. We must hold on, be patient, the end. You cannot kill King Solomon before his time. So God promised you that same grace will give you the ability to patiently wait in hope that you will one day become the king of Israel, like Jeroboam. If you leave Egypt before Solomon is dead, you'll be killed. And you will die. But God cannot, God cannot remain a liar. He's God. He's ever truthful. It is you who was not patient in hope. Praise God. Now allow me to finish here. Amen. We will we'll continue. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Umeshika neno. That's why we need to walk in. I want you today as you rise up. I don't know where you have used your human effort. Or could it be seen that is holding your life? Could it be rules? Or you are just basically someone who practices religion? Which has become your insufficiency. And God is saying this today. I want to release to you my sufficiency, my indescribable love, my exceeding joy, my union and intimacy. He said, I want to release to you freedom, total freedom. He said, I want to release. And beautiful power 
terapis and just lift your hands to God and Lord I don't want to be like Jeroboam you raised him under grace made him a king under grace but he refused to be sustained with the grace Lord, I want to be sustained by the grace. Lord, today I receive the redemption by the blood. My sins are forgiven. Tell him, Lord, today I am healed by the blood of the Lamb. Tell him, Lord, today I will love you so much to sustain the grace. Tell him, Jesus, I will continue in you to the end. Tell him, Jesus, I will continue in faith. Tell him, Jesus, I will walk in the Spirit and live in the Spirit. Tell him, Jesus, I will be patient. I will be patient for this hope to the final end. May the God of all sufficiency make his grace abound. That you will be sufficient in all things. And that you will be experienced abundance in every good work. That you will walk in faith the grace can be experienced. That you will deter pride that kills grace. That you will stand firm. That you will not work out your things with your own strength. Nor continue to walk in sin. You will walk in the liberty that God has given you. And so today, in the name of Jesus Christ, I speak upon you right now from the top of your head to the bottom of your feet may the grace abound may it abound upon your life today I declare in the name of Jesus that you are going to move from a servant to a king and you will be sustained as a king to the final end by this grace I declare today what has been impossible shall be possible in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Grace has released to you imputed righteousness. You are justified. So today I declare order in your life. I declare peace in your life. I declare breakthrough in your life. In the name of Jesus. May that favor locate you now. May that favor find you right now. May you walk under that grace in the name of Jesus Christ. May you manifest under this grace. I declare today, no more torment of the devil. No more tormentation of the devil. Your past is wiped by the blood of the Lamb. Let the grace abound upon your family, upon your children, your marriage, your career, your business in the name of Jesus.